The Start 9 OS hasn't had a major update pushed to the public since 2023, and a few things are outdated on it, a few things are limited, but there's this whole new Start OS system that has been built, I believe, from the ground up. It's basically completely different. They had to do a bunch of different things, and this has been in the talks for a long time. And the team at Start9 Labs, they are really diligent about this kind of stuff. They don't push things out too quick. They make sure everything is secure and safe because that is the most important thing. It's kind of like the Bitcoin protocol in that way where security is paramount. The Start9 Labs team is focused on security. They are focused on providing the most secure product. And with that, they have released an alpha or a test uh, version of the Start OS 4.0, and it is available. You can use it. And in this video, I'm going to show how I flashed this onto my mini PC and how you could too if you wanted. Now, just a quick caveat before we get into it. This is uh, this is just for testing and developers. That's who they recommend this for. There's a lot of things that haven't been finished. There's a lot of things that basically need a lot of work and that just, yeah, are complete, that are incomplete. So there's still more work to be done, but it's very impressive what they have already. And this video is just a standalone flashing guide. And then from there, I'll make uh, future videos. Um, discussing all of the changes and showing how to use things like ClearNet. Uh, there's a lot I need to figure out, but as I do, I will relay that and, and showcase that in video form. If you guys want to just buy a plug and play model instead of flashing your own Start9 and doing the DIY route, you can go to start9.com and you can get 5% off using my discount code BNC5, which is linked in the description. And you can buy one of these amazing plug and play models. They use really high end hardware, as much open source as possible with the hardware itself. And they have support that comes with it. It's really quite a value added product when you're buying it from Start9 itself. And it comes with the older version of Start9, but as soon as this update becomes public and is finished beyond just the testers and developers, they will push that as an update to all the um, users of the current Start9 OS, and you'll be able to easily update. You don't have to do this flashing process that I'm about to show you. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is go to this GitHub release. This is for the Alpha 4.0, and we're gonna check out what they have to offer. So these are all, depending on your architecture, what you're building it on, what you're flashing it on, like Raspberry Pi. If it's the server pure, they've done everything they can to have open source hardware. So this is the uh, image file for that. If you're using a sort of off the shelf mini PC with Intel and all sorts of things like that, unfortunately, um, there's only so much you can do with hardware. A lot of that is closed source. A lot of that is just what it is at this point in the manufacturing process and everything that we have going on. So for me, the case is that I need to download this non-free ISO and that's what I'm going to do. And once that's downloaded, we'll go to the next step. All right. So we have the file downloaded. We're going to use Bellina Etcher, which I will link in the description as well. This is a software that allows you to create a bootloader from an ISO file. So we're going to flash from file. We'll go to our downloads, select this ISO open. Now we're going to plug in a USB flash drive. And that's what we're going to load this ISO file onto and create a boot drive from. And that's this one here. It's 64 gigabyte. That's plenty of space. And of course, you do not want to select one of your hard drives by accident because this is just bringing up every storage device on your computer. So we're going to select just the flash drive, press select and flash and we wait for this now. All right, now we're just going to eject this. All right, now we're just gonna remove the flash drive and plug it into our mini PC. Okay, so I have this boot drive plugged in. Now, you might need to get it into a specific USB port on your mini PC. One of them will have sort of more capability than the other ones. So for me, it's the top left. I also plugged in my keyboard because the SSD in here is currently running Umbral 
and it's immediately loading Umbral. So I need to restart this. And when I do restart it, I need to go into the bootloader and change which device it's going to load from. So as this turns on, I have it plugged into my TV here and we'll hit F7 to do the bootloader. So I'm just gonna keep spamming this as my device turns on. You might, I mean, you can do this as many times as you need to. And then you'll see something like this. See, it's, it's loading from my one terabyte drive here. I'm gonna go down and load from my flash drive instead. And I just navigated with my keys and press enter. And now it's going to start loading here. It says the highlighted entry will be executed automatically. And now we should be able to unplug the HDMI cord and access this remotely. Okay, so this is different than the other version of Start9, the previous version. It's actually letting us do all of this through our um, through the HDMI cord. So it looks like to me, I'm gonna need a mouse as well plugged into this. So let's do that. All right, so it's possible that you can do this through your actual mini PC and do it locally on that device. However, I'm going to do it in the other way that it's possible, which is using a computer that is connected to the same internet and accessing that device remotely. So I went to start.local and now I have access to the Start9 interface and I'm doing this through the PC that I'm recording this uh, screen capture with. So let's click this, install. This action will completely erase the disk and install start os in place continue uh let's try again we've got rpc error i'm not sure what that was but uh i can do some deep dive if that doesn't work but it looks like something's happening this second time i would just say if you get that error and it's not allowing you to continue you could throw that into AI, tell AI what you're doing, and potentially they could help you. However, for me, it looks like it worked. So install success, remove the USB stick, and reboot your device to begin using your Start9 server. So I'm gonna unplug the USB, I'm gonna hit this reboot button, and allow it to reboot itself. So I didn't physically reboot it, I just pressed the reboot button on the uh, software here, and just waited a while. Wait 10 minutes, refresh the page. Now we have the start OS set up. So you could restore this from a, um, a backup that you have or something like that. I'm just gonna start fresh to show you guys how to do all of this. So we're gonna select the drive here. We're now, we're now going to choose a password and we can make that whatever we want. All right, so just leave that for a little bit and you will come to this. Now it is important to download your address info. You'll wanna save that somewhere. Uh, I'm just gonna label this a little bit differently here. 4.0. And you'll want to trust your root certificate as well. And I'm gonna cut in from my original Start9 uh, flashing guide how to do this. If you don't do this, you will have to go to advanced, proceed to local to the dot local here. Now you'll put in your password that you just made for your start OS and let's check out the marketplace. Because this is for developers and like a brand new thing here, we do have to actually uh, import the registry. As you can see, there's nothing here. So if we go to this page again and do join discussion, there's, there's actually the registry here from Matt and he tells us where we can get it. So right here is the alpha registry. So let's try that. We'll just copy that. Go back into our marketplace, go to switch and add custom registry and paste that in, save and connect. And these are all undergoing alpha testing. So there might be some things that don't 100% work, but we will see. Now, this is really cool. We can see a couple things that they didn't have in the previous version of Start9. So I do recommend going through some of this. You can create a backup, restore from backup, change your password, SSH in, 
and um, check out your monitoring. I mean, there's just all sorts of cool stuff here. You can look at your different logs, OS, kernel, and Tor, um, update your registries, sideload an uh, S9 PK, and of course, download whatever apps you want on your Start9. And I will go through a couple of these and start downloading them, start getting them to work. There are some things missing from here, but I think this is obviously still getting developed. And um, yeah, so far, this is how to run and flash the uh, Start9 4. And I'll make some follow up videos on how to download a no uh, node and how to sync that up to your Sparrow and everything. Hopefully that was helpful. Again, if you guys want to get a Start9, the hardware device itself, you can check out the link in the description. BNC5 is the code to get 5% off. You can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. I do Bitcoin uh, sessions and coaching. And also there's links to all sorts of other things you need as a Bitcoiner, and they're all below. There's discount links to the Stamp Seed, 15% off. There's the Blockstream Jade. There's all sorts of stuff that uh, is really, really useful as a Bitcoiner. So check that out, and thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next installment of this start nine series.